Hurts. Sorry. Howdy y'all, my name is Edgar Rico. I am the chef and owner of a little taqueria here in Austin, Texas called Nixta. I'm gonna be showing y'all how to make one of my favorite one pot dishes. It's a little dish called chile colorado. The main key ingredient to make this all tied together is our chilies. We're gonna be using three different types of chilies. We're gonna start off first by using the ancho chilies. We're just gonna de-seed all of them. And next up, we're gonna get our guajillo chilies, kind of same deal. Just pouring these seeds out, nice and easy. And then these right here are the uh, New Mexico chilies. Once we got these deseeded, we're gonna move on next and uh, we're gonna toast our chilies and we're gonna rehydrate them. Dutch ovens have a really nice way to like hold in heat. These got these nice high walls on it. It's gonna insulate that heat really nicely. I'm gonna start off by just turning this thing on high. Let some of these natural oils from the chilies kind of come out probably about a minute to a minute and a half. Once these chilies have toasted, we're gonna just rehydrate with a little bit of chicken stock. I'm just gonna pour all that in. And then we're just gonna let this come up to a quick boil. You're gonna turn off the heat. I put the lid on it, then walk away and start getting the rest of your mise en ready for the rest of the dish. I'm gonna start off first by getting the sage. Fresh sage is the key to this dish. Really adds just like a really nice lightness to the dish um, with and still giving it that full herbaceousness. We are just gonna chiffonade it. You are just gonna wrap up all these herbs kind of in a sense and just give them just a quick little choppy chop. Then next off, uh, we're gonna use some of our garlic. Obviously be a little careful, but have some confidence as well when you're cooking, you know. For me, just a rough mince like that is good to go. I'm just gonna put that with my sage because those two are gonna go in the pan at the same time. For all you home chefs out there, we're looking to practice. Chopping onions is a great way to practice your knife skills. Something if you wanna get like a really perfect slice, take off this little core. Next, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna thin slice these onions. So, uh, you're just gonna get in here and you're just kind of letting the... You might cry a little, but it's a labor of love. Ooh, damn, this thing hurts. Sorry. Woo! Yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna walk in and put my head in the fridge really quick. It helps. It really helps. Does it really? Yeah. Let's do it. I'm probably gonna do about half an onion, just for a garnish. But this is gonna just give it a nice little bit of brightness. The final thing to add to this dish is gonna be our last garnish, uh, a little cilantro. So, chef trick I like to do to just take off some of these leaves is just kind of running your knife through the back, just kind of letting the weight kind of do all the mess for you. Uh, but yeah, we're just gonna put this in our bowl. We have a little bit of pork shoulder. So I'm just gonna cut this up in uh, little one inch chunks. It does not have to be perfect. It's gonna be all stewed away, so if it's a little rustic, it's okay. It's just gonna add a ton of flavor. I wanna make sure I'm evenly seasoning all of this meat. I'm gonna grab my kosher salt, big pinch. You wanna make sure you're hitting all of it, but I wanna make sure you're seasoning kinda high. And the reason I'm seasoning high like that is so that the salt is kind of raining on it and kind of evenly distributing, as opposed to you just grabbing a bunch of salt and going really low, and means you're not gonna be seasoning as well. So always when you season, you wanna season kinda high. Next off, a little bit of pepper. And then we're just gonna put it right back in our bowl. And we're gonna get it ready, so we're gonna start searing this off and start making our chili Colorado. These chilies should be nice and rehydrated. Um, we're just gonna pull these over and we're gonna blend these up. Um, you'll definitely notice a big difference in these. They're gonna be nice and soft now. You'll notice the texture on them. It smells amazing. And we're gonna blend these all up. So, with our liquid, you're gonna just pour on top. 
And the remainder of our liquid we're going to pour off into this bowl over here to the side. Um, the only reason for that is because we're going to see our meat, the rest of our meat off in this. But with this, um, we're just going to low and slow blend this up. So everything is nicely well emulsified and blended really nice. Boom. So. Nice. Mm. All right, so we're gonna just wipe this pan out, get all the remaining liquid out, and then we're gonna start searing our meat. Keep our chili in here so you don't have to get anything else dirty. Turn our Dutch oven on high heat so we can start just letting this thing come up to temperature. For this, we're gonna be doing what's called Maillard reaction. So what we're gonna want is that the meat is browning. Browning is key for this dish. If you don't get the Maillard reaction in this, that means you're not gonna get a fond, which means you're also gonna get really gray, kind of gross looking meat, then that's no bueno. Um, couple things that are gonna help are making sure you don't overcrowd your pan so that the meat is browning, not sweating. So we're gonna do this in batches. We're gonna be using just a little neutral oil, like a little canola. Putting it at that base of this, if you hear the sizzle, so you're getting a nice caramelization on your meat. So once you got that meat in there, leave it alone. This is where you're gonna start getting that mired reaction. If you're constantly stirring the pan around, you're, that meat's not gonna get a chance to caramelize on there. So a big key is it'll just let it be. Don't touch it. Probably gonna take about 45 seconds to a minute. But once you do, um, the key thing you should be seeing is nice golden kind of pieces like that. That's good. Don't worry. Don't, don't let that scare you that there's browning happening. That's where the flavor is going to be later when we're building our sauce. So check the meat. If we got enough, enough caramelization on all sides, then we'll take it out and we'll start off our next round. You got some really nice golden pieces on there. Um, it's exactly what we're looking for. But I'm going to start off this next round of searing and uh, you're going to do exactly kind of the same thing. Don't overcrowd and just uh, little by little. And you should definitely notice at the bottom of the pan that you got a really beautiful fond. This is gonna be where all that flavor's at. We got our meat browned up now. Sage that we had chopped up earlier and some of that garlic. It's gonna go right in the pan. It's gonna sizzle really quick. Um, you don't want this garlic to burn. Then we're gonna add in next some of that Mexican oregano. Uh, a little bit of cumin. We're just gonna add in a little bit of that juice so we can remove some of that fond. And then you're gonna turn your heat back on. And you're gonna scrape up all that fond off from the bottom because that is where that flavor is at. You just took all this time to sear all this meat and build this beautiful crust. You don't wanna throw it away by not using any of it. So. Using a little bit of that liquid will help kind of take off all that love and juice. So afterwards, we're just gonna put our meat right back in. And then we're gonna put in our chili sauce. And then a nice little trick you can do is with some of this juice that you had, kind of get it all around, don't waste it. Pop in some bay leaves. A little stir, stir, stir action. But you're gonna be coming back I'd say every 10 to 15 minutes. Um, but we're just gonna put this lid on this. We're gonna wait for this to come up to a boil. Once it comes up to a boil, uh, I'm gonna turn it down to like a medium heat. And then we're just gonna let it ride. Um, probably 50 minutes to an hour. Um, but you can also, if you want, if you're not, if you don't have the time to just stand over the stove and stir away, you could, since it is a Dutch oven, put the oven at about 225 and leave it in there for like six to eight hours and you can come back pop that lid open and it's going to be ready to go and you'll have a meal but if you're looking for something kind of quicker to get dinner on the table a little quicker um, you could just do it right over the stovetop and be just as delicious all right y'all so we're about 40 minutes into the process i'm gonna let let it finish off without this lid for about the last eight to ten minutes of cooking 
and just kind of let it start reducing down. Also, you'll kind of give it a stir, but at this point you'll definitely notice a big difference from where we had started originally with this pot. Um, but yeah, we're just gonna let this finish off and reduce down to that, all those juices and kind of concentrate a little bit more. And this can get really just that prime optimal flavor. As you can tell here, you will definitely see a huge reduction in the sauce. Um, things you're looking out for, the meat's tender. Um, also too, that you've kind of built like a nice little fond of deliciousness that is now all in your sauce. Um, a big thing you want to look for is that the sauce is nappé. Um, so for me, it means you can run your finger. If you've got a clean spoon like that, that means you know you're ready to go. Time to plate up all this lovely chili Colorado. I've been working at this for well over an hour now. So all we're going to do now is we're going to plate it up in our bowl. Um, we're going to garnish it with some of those shaved red onions on top. Uh, a little bit of that uh, cilantro that we picked earlier. A little bit of lime that we're going to serve with it on the side. And then to finish off the dish, um, you're going to serve it with a little bit of tortillas. You can either choose corn or flour, up to you. Um, and then to finish, uh, just a touch of Malden salt. Um, it's going to help just give you a little bit of crunch and a little bit of texture throughout the dish. At this point, you are at the best part of the day. You got to eat what you made. So I like to definitely hit this with a little bit of fresh lime, you know, to kind of get a little acid in the dish. Um, definitely do not forget your tortilla. You can eat some of the meat and get some of the sauce as you go. You can make a little taco. However you choose, that's up to you. That's the fun part about this. Um, but I mean, this stuff is just magical. Mm -hmm. Wow, so immediately when you bite into this, you know, you're gonna get that rich succulent pork. Um, it's gonna be balanced out with some of that nice smoky spices from the chilies and then also the sage. The sage is a key for this thing. Sage really gives it that depth of flavor that's kind of unexpected. The cilantro, the red onions, and the lime, also perfect complements for this. Cut down all this richness and do not forget your tortilla. You gotta get the tortilla so you can get a little sauce action. Because the sauce is just as good as the pork. So, have some fun with this. Chili Colorado, it's a really simple dish, one pot meal. That's, those are some of my favorite meals, especially when it's packing this much flavor. So, my name is Edgar Rico, chef, owner of uh, Nixta Taqueria, and uh, we hope to see you out there. Maybe you might catch this as a daily special. I'm feeling inspired, so you never know. But anyways, signing off, you have a great day.